Radio YouTube, so just a bit more masking again. Why not? People have been saying they've been enjoying them, so yeah, I'll do my best to keep you interested again. Maybe talk a bit of shit, but um, yeah, it's a pretty easy job here. Uh, yeah, blend on the front door, blend on the rear quarter, and a new door skin on that door over there. So, where are we gonna open this thing? So, I found it's a lot easier when you've got little areas to paint in here just go the whole way around just do it a lot i think i said it in the last video yeah i'm pretty sure i did um but like i used to try and and i've seen lots of people do it try and fail but you'll try doing like a little blend in there but then all the overspray from here lands on it and it basically turns into a bit of a sand pit and looks crap so yeah that's what i've just found like you've usually got like a little area there you can loop up and sort of like just jump down here So yeah, I mean the way I see it with these videos, like they're raw, unedited videos. If you don't like them, you don't have to watch them, and I know not everyone does watch them, and that's fine, like it doesn't bother me. But if there's, you know, a handful of people out there that are gonna learn something out of it, or even just get some entertainment of the crap I'm talking, why not, you know? Um, they're minimal issues for me to upload. Jeez, I was busy last weekend though, today's Monday. And yeah, I had a flat out weekend, like, my wife is from Laos, we had like, had another email about visa papers and basically spent the whole weekend, well not the whole weekend on the visa, but yeah, quite a lot of the, the usual time I would have spent editing, um, organising certified copies of documents and writing out reports and all this boring stuff that I'd rather not have to do, but you got to do what you got to do. And yeah, good news that we, we actually um, got an email this morning. I was surprised that they got onto it so quickly, but they approved this visa. We got, like, there's all these different numbers to it and everything, but long and the short of it, she's allowed to stay here for at least two years, and then we have to apply for one final one um, that, that when she's been here for five years, um, she'll be able to get permanent residency. But you have to apply for that after she's been here for like two and a half. Yeah. So for now, it's all good. That's all you really need to know. It, it was worth it, you know. It was worth putting those hours into, and obviously, getting to be with the one you love. Yeah. So that door there, we primed it up last Friday and it wasn't too good. This door here, through there, it was like a little, like some slight ripples or I ended up just filling the entire section from here to here. Blocked it out, primed it up this morning, or re-primed it I should say. Alan got like, asked to do the putty ups at like quarter past four, there was this job. And there was like another job, I think. Yeah, I got the other one ready and ended up just doing them for him because he wanted to go home on time. And I'm like, bang, bang, just smashed them out like real quickly. Cut a few corners and I'm like, man, I know the corners I can cut and I, I wouldn't like to um, have to do overtime on a Friday. So I just got in and got it done for him. He was happy he got to go home on time. He was expecting to have to stay back for half an hour. And I'm like, nah. Hope you're doing any overtime, mate. 15 minutes is ample time to get some primer on a job, you know. Couple of coats, mate. Got it done. Yeah, as I said, like I had to re-prime that door this morning anyway, so. Not to worry, the work's getting done. We're moving forward. Moving in the right direction. I like to remask these because there could be little bits of dust caught up in that. That was just for the prep work, for the sake of the prep work, this masking there. I'll redo that. And I'm gonna need some trim tape there. And this bloody thing, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to like mask it half open because if you look up here, you'd never really get in there properly. I'm gonna have to have it sitting up around here. Bit of a prick to do, but 
You gotta do it sometimes. Got a bit of wire here. Just wire it down. Oh, how funny is that? Like, well, it probably shouldn't be funny, but I think it is. It's, um, we, I worked with this detailer back in, uh, in Melbourne, and I don't know, for some reason, he was up in the paint shop and he was helping out, and there was like uh, boot hinges, uh, wh what you would probably call in the States trunk hinges. Anyway, they were wired down under an immense amount of pressure because, yeah, the boot hinges need quite a decent amount of pressure to push the boot up. And he's just gone and undo undoing this wire with his face straight above the hinge. I'm like, I stopped him. I'm like, dude, you were about to like lose your front teeth or break your jaw or something like that. That could have gone really, really, really bad. Um, yeah. So the lesson of that one is to <laughs> use your head. Think about what you're doing. Yeah, he wasn't the brightest. Now I've seen some funny things over the years. And yeah, for those for those that don't like the talking, don't watch or, or use the volume button, mate. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I, I didn't tell you you have to watch this channel. I told nobody that they have to watch this channel. If you don't like the talking, don't watch. If you don't like the channel, don't watch. I don't care. The same with my, my main videos. I don't, I don't care if you don't watch them, you know. If you um, don't like my opinions or whatever, you don't have to watch. I still do find it amazing how many people do watch though. It's yeah, pretty amazing. I think I've said it in other videos, like I um I watch these other guys like uh Universe Today, uh Fraser Kane, he's got like pretty interesting space uh you know and technology based YouTube channel which I love. And I go to his channel and you know check the views and he's got less views than me. It's like man, I, I think he's better than me, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I think his videos are better than mine. Um, I, th I feel like he deserves more views than me, but you know, it is what it is. The people decide, I guess, what they want to watch. <clears throat> Alright, that'll do for that. Yeah, is this going to go down? It should mask up pretty easy, this one, actually. Yeah, that's getting tired. That's real tight. If we can get the rest of it to look like that, we're uh, we're laughing. Yeah, that's getting really tight through the top there. I wonder if that bolts out. No, they're gonna have to pull all these trims out. It will it will be a bolt in, I'd imagine there. Most of the quarter glasses are, but well some of them are actually glued in. I may have to opt for like a fine line tape, but I'd rather not do that if possible. No, that's that's way too tight. I don't think I'm gonna get that to work. Oh well, you win some, you lose some. That one should work.
Oh uh, yeah, um, Alan Heady, you're probably watching now. I know you do watch most of my videos. Um, left a comment in my previous masking video saying that he couldn't picture me working in a mine site. Okay, so I'll elaborate in the kind of mines that I was working on. Well, I did actually work in some open pit mines. We did some exploration, so you'd literally just be out in the bush. I guess, what do they call that in the US, the bush, in, in the, the woods, <laughs> in the woods. So, you know, um, sort of like in the desert, those kinds of places. Um, yeah, and in open pit mines. I never actually worked in uh, un underground mine. Now you did say in your comment, like I'm picturing you like maybe in a, in like a coal mine or something like that, no. Um, I've never worked in any coal mines or underground mines. I've worked near them, um, but never actually in them. Um, yeah, so the the big pits that we've worked in, like man, they're pretty pretty full on having the dump trucks whiz by you because we'd be standing on the side of a drill rig. Um, the kind of drilling is like RC drilling, so I think I, I did explain it in the last video. So um, the driller would be sitting in the cabin and we'd be basically on the side taking the samples. Um, pretty hardcore work, pretty, uh, what's the word, physically demanding and in extreme weather conditions. Dirty, like you would literally get back from uh, work every night and your face would just be carpeting crap. Um, yeah, I've actually been meaning to do a video on that, <coughs> just dedicated to my experience in the mines. I've been meaning to do a dedicated video for a while. I thought it'd just be cool, something different, share from my experiences, what it was like for me. That's just got under there. Might actually have to do something like that the whole way across if we can. As my uncle used to say, tight as a nun's nasty. Family friendly Felix here. Do you guys like PewDiePie? I reckon he's funny. Like, I don't watch as many of his videos as I used to, but I still think he's a really funny bastard. And, yeah, I never never got into his gaming stuff because I don't really like Let's Plays. Just sitting down and watching someone playing a video game, I find that, like, really boring. I don't know how people can, yeah, watch it. Unless you really enjoy the, um, the actual person who's doing it and you like what they bring to it, but... Just sitting down and watching someone else playing video games, pretty boring to me, like, unless I'm sitting there with them and you're sort of like, um, playing couch co-op or something like that, or, you know, <coughs> swapping the controller over or something, but, yeah, who likes PewDiePie? But I do like watching, um, like, YouTube channels that are sort of dedicated to gaming, um, that do reviews and stuff like that. I like that kind of video game content. The weird thing is I don't play them anymore. I barely play them at all anymore. Never get time. Jeez, this is a prick. I'm gonna have to uh, fine line that, I reckon. But I really don't want to. I don't like there being any, I don't like leaving any evidence that the car's been painted. And to me, these kind of edges are like a dead giveaway if you, if you do get a bit of an edge around a window. It just makes the job look messy and, yeah, pay a little bit more attention to these kinds of things and save your time elsewhere, I guess. Save your time on your prep work or something. Speed that prep up a bit, but just make sure these kind of mouldings and stuff are masked up really nice, I guess. That's going to work for that corner, which is good. And if I do have to fine line it, I'll put the fine line on last and peel it off while the paint's still fresh. So it'll sort of uh, melt in. Any edge will like melt in. I still remember the days when they used to pull all these kinds of things out, no matter what. The industry has changed a bit. Insurance companies sort of like to cut down on costs where they can and
That's all good though, like most of the time these don't mask up too bad. not going in any further so you can, it's under but it's not digging right in I usually like to get them right in there nice and snug but this is kind of just in that should actually work that will be better than fine line I can just see myself going and tack ragging it and having it pull off on me that would be a prick if I'm careful, I should be right there. Yeah, so apologies about not replying to comments these days. I'm a very busy man. Not that I don't care. And when possible, I'll do my best to get back to it in a, in a video as I just did with Ellen's comment. But yeah, I'm sure you've probably heard of uh, YouTuber burnout as well. Like it, it's pretty, pretty tiring, uploading videos all the time. And I think I've started to get a little bit of it. Like I still enjoy it, but yeah, not as like excited about it as you are at the start, if you know what I mean. But yeah, that that's that's gonna work. Alright, so what I'm going to do on this job again, as usual, um, is I'll just get it edge masked. I'll then put a piece of plastic over it and then get the wet on wet down. Sorry if I'm, I'm not like full on the ball, I'm a little bit slow today. It's Monday, give me a break, I'm tired, I don't want to be here. I'd rather be at home with my missus, relaxing. Um, so, yes. Sometimes you're <laughs> fully on the ball and loving it, but hey, I'm not hating it here, it's all good, but I guess it's one of those things, it's not in the big talking mood. Painted a uh, Mazda BT50 before this one, I painted a new fender, blend on the door, blend and repair on the door, um, a little bit on the bull bar, and there was like a side step off that, so I did that this morning and then finished the day off with this one, two jobs for the day.
It's actually warming up today. It's like 24 degrees and it's still winter at <laughs> 24 Celsius. I honestly don't know what that is in Fahrenheit for you Americans. But yeah, it's like, God, I love you, Perth. I checked on my weather app and uh, back over in Melbourne where I'm from, it's like, what was it? 10. <laughs> so yeah, it's actually in Melbourne. Okay, we'll use that up in there. A small one. Not much good for anything else, really. This one's actually looking like it's going to be a bit small, too. Yeah, we'll fix the rest with tape. Oh uh, yeah, I'd, I'd um, love to do like three day weeks. I think I've said it in other videos, but man, that'd be so good. Just work like Tuesday to Thursday. Um, more time off than at work. I reckon that sounds awesome. One day, mate, I'll get there. Determination and hard work will get me there. Yeah, look, realistically, it probably won't be until another 10 to 15, 20 years, but you know, I reckon uh, if you set your mind to anything, you should be able to get it done. You know what one of my next goals is, as far as YouTube goes? Um, I'm, not, I'm not really thinking about a million subscribers. I don't think it's ever even going to happen, but it could. Um, but 100 a million views. I think we're on like uh, 27 or something, 28 million views on the main channel, that is. But... Maybe I should just go for 100 million across uh, all, my, all my channels. Well, there's only really two that are doing the heavy lifting, which is the Raw and the main channel, but Raw channel's got like two and a half, three million views. That's pretty damn good, really. So it's 30 million all up for both channels. Um, but the reason got me thinking about 100 million is that uh, Thunderfoot, a YouTuber, which I used to watch quite a bit of, I haven't really been watching him for a while now. He's kind of got a bit same same, but I remember he when he clicked over to 100 million, he like made a video about it and just sort of reflected on actually how much of a reach that is and yeah how much you've sort of had an influence on the world and I just thought yeah no he's right that is that would be a pretty cool number to get to but even then as I say like where we are now is still pretty amazing as it is you know. They were talking on the radio this morning about uh, kids these days. <laughs> Makes you sound old, doesn't it? But no, they were. They were talking about. Um, I like to listen to my six PR, which is just local talkback radio in the mornings. That literally it only takes me like three or four minutes to get to work, so I don't listen to a lot of it. But um, listen to that on the way home, just a bit of talkback, like news and that. And um, yeah, they're talking about like the entitled generation, the kids of today. <laughs> yeah. Um, that basically, yeah, like they they expect everything for free, and they're still, like they actually would expect their own parents to um, like do less things that they want in their later years because they see it as their money. It's like, man, that's rude. If that's seriously what what you know, that, what did they say? 18 to 25 year olds, or a lot of them think about it that way anyway. It's like, man, that's rude. As I would never. Um, begrudge my parents of uh, li living out their days um, happily and doing what they like <clears throat> and shame on you if that's the way you look at your parents as just um, money pits that you that owe you something because they don't owe you anything you owe them mate without them you wouldn't be here they've already given up a lot you know to um, for you to even just get to adulthood and for you to expect more and more and more that's just the height of rudeness yeah like my wife is from um, from Laos and she's like next door to Thailand and Cambodia and it's the opposite way over there like 
over here, um, when you're an adult and you, you need money, like you can usually go to your parents, like a lot of people can anyway. Hey mum, dad, you know, I need a bit of a loan or whatever it be, you know, help us out. It's the opposite way over there. Um, yeah, when, when you're an adult, you're the one taking care of your parents over there. So there's many things I do actually like about my wife's culture. And a bit. Yeah, usually three full arm lengths gets me over a car. Three and a bit, yeah, pretty close. All the rest out there. So yeah, what do you think of this colour? It's kind of cool in some way, I guess. I mean, I don't hate it, I don't love it. It's kind of in a way similar to that Tiger Mike, or maybe Maybe a bit more orange than Tiger Mica. That was a really popular colour here in Australia in the early 2000s. So everyone wanted to paint their colour Tiger Mica. I think it's like the VT Commodores. They were painted in it. I mean, this will be a fun colour to paint. You know, nice sort of bright orange to it. Fun colour to clear anyway. I think I'm going to use a bit of blender on this job. I think it's probably like one of those 50-50s. You could probably get away without it, but for what it's worth, I think I'll just put a bit of blender down. So we're about ready to hit spray, preps all this door up, I'll mask these spots up and get some wet on wet down. While the wet on wet's drying, I'll finish my masking and yeah, and we'll paint some shit. And then I'm going to go home. Whew. Radio YouTube, bit of masking, so I've got some wet on wet down on my door first, I've got all the edge masking done. And yeah, just got to slice the plastic out, tape it down, and then we'll get some colour on this car. It's a RAV4, pretty cool colour I reckon. Um, it's one of those things, you might hate it, but I think it's cool. It's going to it's gonna be fun to paint anyway. Just like a bright orange, full of pearls. Um, the F4 wet on wet, it's like a mid-grey. It's usually my go-to for most colours. Obviously, if you're painting an extra dark colour, you won't use it, or an extra light colour, but... Most reds or oranges, I'll go straight to the F4. Um, silvers even, you know, so that's a good universal silver ground coat. Again, if it's like a dark grey, you'd go the next one, F5, but yeah. It's F4, F5, F6, it isn't gonna mean much to anyone unless you know the standoff system. That's just the, um, the code that they give to the um, different colored wet on wet primers. They used to have like proper black and proper white, but they changed it. I think the, um, the wet on wet itself is better than the older stuff, but they just uh, cut out a couple of colours. Like, they've got a light grey, so it's not actually white, and they've got a very dark grey, but it's not actually quite black. But the wet on wet, I think, is actually better. Like, this stuff is, they tell me, like, it starts off as an epoxy base. Um, so they say, yeah, it, you can spray straight over um, bare steel and you'll get your corrosion protection and all that. You can actually put a um, plastic additive into that wet on wet. And uh, like if you're painting a bumper bar, you can put this plastic additive in and just go straight on with wet on wet without the plastic primer. But I used it once back in Melbourne at uh, one of the places I was working and yeah, I didn't like it. The other guys were saying they didn't like it. And I thought, oh, how bad can it be? I'll give it a shot myself. And then as soon as I use it, I'm like, yeah, okay, I see why they don't like it. It dries way too quick. You probably could slow it right down with like slower hardeners and that, but then anybody got time for that. 
um, yeah, what I found is like I would when I was using that plastic uh, additive, you'd start spraying half of the bumper, and by the time you get over to the other side, it was like already dry. And uh, uh, you know how when you're spraying over your own overspray, it's like a little sand pit. That's what was happening, but just from one side of the bumper to the other. So I'm like, yeah, I'm not using that again. Let us know what your thoughts are if you're a standoff sprayer and you, you do like the plastic attitude. But you know, the next shop I worked in also the same the the painters there didn't like it either. They said exactly the same thing. I'm like, yeah, I didn't use it either, so the paint wraps up it when you <laughs> use all their products but they're not the ones spraying it so I mean, they're all going to tell you, like the paint are going to tell you how to do things by the book, but sometimes you've got to uh, write your own book. <laughs> Obviously, you can't, you can't go too far outside the recommendations, but there's a few things that you can do that aren't technically meant to be done exactly that way. Yeah, I had someone comment recently, um, it's like, yeah, I can see why you enjoy masking. I think up to, yeah, like I uploaded a video on the weekend and he's like, yeah, I, I can see why you enjoy it. Because to me, it's just, it's just relaxing, like, I don't know, it's just easy as well. I think it is anyway. It's just, just like anything now, you know, like once, once you sort of get the hang of it and get good at it, it's, it's not hard anymore. Yeah, it's warming up today, it's bloody hot in here now. It's, it's like um, 24 degrees and it's still winter here in Australia, here in Perth. I looked at my weather app before and uh, I'm from Melbourne. Over there it's like 10 degrees, over here it's 24. <laughs> Suck shit, Melbourne. Yeah, I don't really miss that place. I went back there a couple of years ago. Man, it's way too busy over there now. I don't know if it's just because, like, partly because um, I got used to Perth and it's not as busy. Um, <laughs> Or if it is actually a bit busy, I think it's a bit of both. Like, yeah, I did get used to a not quite so busy city, and then moving back, and it had actually got a lot busier. Yeah, like I was driving to work, man. It took like what should probably be a 20 minute drive um, without traffic, it's like 30, 40 minutes, I was probably 40, 50 minutes each way. And what ended up happening, like back in the day when I used to live over there, it'd be like, oh yeah, if you left it like a little bit early, half an hour early, let's just say uh, 6.30 or something instead of um, 7 o'clock, you'd, you'd sort of beat the traffic. But it's like 6.30 is the new 7.30, if you know what I mean. Um, because everyone's sort of cottoned on to the fact that if you don't leave at 6.30, you just won't get there in time. So it's like everyone's doing that now. So yeah, it's crazy. So like 5.30 is the new 6.30 and the same thing at night time, you know. Um, it's sort of like 6.30 at night is when it starts dying down instead of 5.30 at night because everyone's leaving later as well. Well, lots of people are anyway. Yeah, full peak hour traffic in Melbourne, man. It's hectic as insane. And then, and then you put a... Uh, an accident on the freeway in, in the mix and you're just slowed down to a crawl. Yeah, I don't miss that. I live just around the corner from where I work. But yeah, it's a five minute drive, I think. I've always done that though, like wherever I've, like, because I've always like working in workshops. Most of the time, except when I went to work at the drillers offsider in the remote mines. Um, yeah, I used to, um, I've always, sorry, I've, I've always uh, moved close to work, cut that travel time down, I don't like it, man, I hate it, it's just 
wasting time. I'd rather be spending that time at home editing videos or at home relaxing. You know, you take an hour each day, even if it's just a half hour drive each way. So there's an hour each day. That's, you know, it's an hour's overtime you can do each day and turn that into money or five hours a week you can just spend at home. Spending it in traffic. I, I understand not everyone can because you know, circumstances, you can't always, not everyone can live close to work, but yeah, whenever possible, I'll always do it. Uh, that's like another thing I like about flexibility of renting, like, I did buy a home back in Victoria, but uh, I'm still renting here in Perth. That's one thing, like, Perth property prices are pretty insane, same in Melbourne, man, they're like really expensive. So I bought a, bought a uh, home up country where I grew up. It's like half the price and you get like twice the size of the house. So once it's paid off, that's what I was thinking. Oh, well, you go back and live on the country wage and you take rent out of you know the equation and you're kind of effectively on a city wage, if you know what I mean. So that should work out quite well. Once you've got that paid off, you go back live in the country and you're still sort of bare ahead because you're saving on your rent. And I'll get to live close to friends and well, not many friends left there anymore to be honest, but yeah, closer to family at least. But I do have a few friends in Melbourne still, so you know, only two hours from Melbourne. Hey, you guys listen to me rambling, talking shit. Yeah, I had someone complaining about me talking too much. <coughs> Okay, do you need me to actually make a video on showing you where the volume button is on your phone or on your computer screen or your, your TV? Um, because mine's got one, I know where it is. If you don't know where your volume button is or you don't know where the uh, stop button is, sorry, that's not my fault. If you just want to listen to ambient booth background, well, you're on the wrong channel. <laughs> I'm sorry. And yeah, I, I never forced anyone to watch these videos. If you don't like what you see, don't watch. If you don't want to listen to me talk shit on my raw videos, don't watch. You don't have to subscribe, you don't have to watch, it doesn't bother me. And when you're not happy with it, you can always get your money. Oh, oh, that's right, you didn't pay anything. Oh well, so yeah, <laughs> you're not getting shit back. Yeah, like sometimes I used to like reply to people's comments and they're like, oh, fuck, is this video shit, blah, blah, blah. I'd reply to them saying, please email my complaints team for a full refund, less postage and handling. <laughs> it's like, man, you, you don't have to watch. You didn't have to watch this and you didn't have to leave that negative comment because, yeah, I, I don't really care. Like, I just uploaded a video, you liked it or not, whatever. like this sense of entitlement. I click on a video, it should be up to the quality standards of, that I'm expecting when I click on a YouTube video. That, oh, not a mini, that bloody harbour freight gun that you sent me is more more bloody troubles than good. They're, like, people from the third world are all, they're all, like, usually Islamic Mustafa names and stuff like that that are hating on me. Don't call guns garbage, you know, these are our livelihood. So, well, to me, okay, maybe, maybe it was poor use of language, but, you know, to me, as a tradesman in the West, they're not much good, those harbour freight guns. You know, I do understand, not, I'm not hating on people that live in the third world, but at the end of the day, my channel is um, aimed at people like me and from the West, you know, I, I don't make, I'm, I'm not a Middle East, I'm not a poor man, like, um, I make videos, yeah, to target people with similar interests to me. 
and you're all coming from the third world and you need like a $10 spray gun to get by to feed your kids, you know, so that you can paint that car to feed your kids, well that's, that's all well and good, but I'm sorry my videos aren't actually aimed at you. Um, yeah, what? Yeah, sorry, that's about all I can really say. But for the rest of us over here in the West, yeah, the, the guns are no good. Like, I wouldn't recommend them. Well, maybe for like a bit of um, 1K primer or something out in the workshop. Apart from that, not really much use for us. gonna work. Nearly there. That should have given that wet on wet ample time to flash off. I will go out, clean that wet on wet gun out and get the colour in the gun and a bit of blender. This colour is like one of those 50-50s. You probably wouldn't need it but for what it's worth, I think I'll just put a coat of the blender down. 599, blending aid, clear base coat. Base coat blender. <laughs> it's like a hundred different names you can call that stuff. Um, and yeah, it was something that like, especially early in the piece of me making these videos, like everyone's like, what is that stuff? And then like people would go down to their local paint supplier and they wouldn't know what it is. I even had people like, I think it was Alan even, um, my current apprentice, and he, he went down to Parks, Park Automotive, the guys that, you know, sell all the stuff, and they're like, they didn't even know what it was, and I'm like, come on, they, they should know what it is, like, this clear base coat, base coat blender, binder, like, yeah, some call it binder, it's called stabilizer, base coat stabilizer in the standoff mix, but yeah, like, every paint system's got one, just a clear base coat. Well, I'm yet to see one that doesn't have it anyway. Any base coat system without it. It's got to cover your ass for being wrong. Someone who come out and say, "Oh no, no, this, this paint system doesn't have it." No, I don't. I don't know of any paint systems without one. So you gotta be careful with how you word things as a YouTuber, you know, like um, if you're unsure about something, you're better off saying that. Who's this? Oh, he wants the camera. Hello, right, Kiwi, mate. Hold on, I'll get my before photos first. That'll do us. And I'll get my number plate in there. I can't even remember what I was saying. Oh yeah, that's right. Careful of your words when you're a YouTuber. You bet, like, you make yourself look more stupid of, like, saying, oh, you know, like, for instance, just then, when I said, oh, there isn't any paint system without them. I don't know, there actually may be. So you're better off saying, um, yeah, I don't know of any paint systems without one. Next thing you know, someone will come across and say, hey, yeah, this, this paint system doesn't have it, you idiot. <laughs> That's not just of YouTube though, that's, that's across all things in life, if, if you don't know, you, you actually, I've seen some people do it, I can't remember the exact instances now, but they'll say things and then you, you'll be like, you're wrong man, like you would have been better off saying, oh I think, and then you can double check it, but yeah, when you go out and say, you know, that you know something, then you find out that person's wrong, it kind of does make them look silly, so... Yeah, there's probably been a few times I've made myself look silly, but I'm doing my best to keep it all factual. Do a little bit of a loop down here. 
good thing the door sits right here anyway, so if there is a minor edge, you're never really going to see it down there. I want to put a little bit of paper down the back there as well. I had to mask this up because when that shut, it covers a little bit there. I'll put a little bit down here. That's just about us. Bit of prep sole. Always keep a few brand new rags in my awesome booth box. Still love this thing. <laughs> so handy. Um, and yeah, prep sole. Then I'll do that fine line masking there. And we're on to paint some shit. It's always just like checking over your prep work, make sure you haven't got a little cut through. If you have, you know, puff a bit of colour over it rather than clearing over it, but actually looking like pretty solid prep work there, Gunny. There is, there's a little chip right there. Two choices, either touch it in or spray a bit of colour over it. My colour is pretty good, but I think I might just do a little bit of touch up. That's it, there's another chip here. I fixed the chip there. The blind filler in that one. Then I'll flip that over to the clean side and wipe it over once more. I'm going to do that false edge just down here. False edge masking. I've heard a few people say, oh, they still struggle with the false edging. I do actually have a dedicated video um, of how to do this, but this is how you do it. Flip it over, pull it over your knee. It's really that simple. gonna work 
little bit here, and I noticed I messed a bit up here. Sort that out with a little bit of thin peg, three quarter inch. Three quarter inch, sorry. That's us. I'm happy with that. I'll be back in a few minutes. We'll get some color on it, baby.